What's up, guys, and welcome back to the channel. As always, it's your boy Ben, co host of Price Plow. And uh, today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I know normally you guys expect to see Mike talking about our friends NNB um, with Sean Wells on the podcast or his wild experiments with uh, Beba, that incredible fat burner that he's really into right now. Um, we're working to help these guys out over here from America and give some explainers on their products. Uh, NNB was so nice to send over to me a ton of capsules of their dihydro berberine. So I know you guys have seen uh, by now my Glucose RX review, which is a great glucose disposal agent that utilizes normal berberine hydrochloride. You've seen Mike talk a lot about uh, sugar, carbohydrates, how much he hates carbohydrates, but then almost also how much he loves carbohydrates for performance, uh, and a lot about how sugar, fat, the combinations, the timing, the lifestyle around those can affect your blood sugar and how that will affect your life. So um, Mike finally got me into it being interested about this. I've been experimenting with bur a dihydroberberine as well as a host of different uh, glucose disposal agents and also uh, pricking my fingers and testing the blo my blood sugar, which is why I can't feel the ends of any of my fingers right now. So uh, last week I did a really fun experiment where I found a baseline for myself. I tried a couple different glucose disposal agents and I also tried out this product. Before that, I was taking this at the 200 milligrams three times a day dose, uh, which they, they recommend one to 200 milligrams three times a day. And so if you know me, you know that I just go full send with the full dosage three times a day. And it was interesting. I was post contest. So obviously when my trading comes down, I'm trying to drive food into my body, but taking 200 milligrams of dihydroberberine three times a day was having a really hard time holding on to weight. I was just dropping weight like crazy, getting leaner and leaner, looking much better. And I was eating like 350, 375, 400, mil, uh, 400 grams of carbs a day. It's not like the highest I've ever been, but it's not chump change. So um, it was interesting, but I didn't have any data to back it up. So I started... Uh, testing my blood with some glucose disposal agents and then just this ingredient. So to recap again, if you didn't watch my other one, I've got my data all up here for myself. My baseline was basically waking up around 90 in the morning, sometimes as low as 87. Uh, if I had a really bad night of sleep, I got a, as high as 98, which was really interesting myself for myself. Um, I learned a lot about my body and this is a, like kind of like a side note. But I found that even like if I had the best night of eating and even took a glucose disposal agent late in the afternoon, but had a bad night of sleep, that would totally ruin my blood glucose just personally, which I thought was interesting. But my baseline was around 90. Um, and I was dosing a, about 125 milligrams of sugar for this experiment. So I took this um, and my blood glucose was at 90, uh, 90 exactly actually. Um, a half hour later, I dosed out 125 milligrams of sugar from Mega Stuffed Oreos and Sweet Tarts. Um, I found out this week that I don't like candy as much as I thought that I did after consuming this much of it every day. Within 45 minutes, my blood sugar was at 136. So I find this really interesting because uh, at my baseline, it was normally around 150-ish um, with my favorite uh, glucose disposal agent it got down to around 125 some of them were a little bit higher sometimes uh, that was the most effective one that I saw those around 125 um, so for just one ingredient at the 45 minute mark it did not outperform uh, a full formula and I, I didn't expect it to honestly I really didn't expect one ingredient to be the whole product but what I was very interested was at the 90 minute mark which is really where I should be you know coming back down with my favorite glucose disposal agent I was at 110 at a baseline I was at 135 but with the dihydroberberine I was at 98 I was almost at baseline for a lot of people that would have been already normal fasting sh uh, blood sugar so obviously anecdotally looking at the numbers wh when you say anecdotally it's usually like feelings you know like it's but this is for me it was hard data i, I felt like i ran a pretty controlled study i did not i, I kept a lot of things controlled did not change much uh day to day to day and this outperformed any formula i put into my body at the 90 minute mark was very impressed with that. Now, to talk about dihydroberberine as an ingredient, 
I'm not going to do a full deep dive on this because to be honest with you, I would be doing it a disservice at compared to how uh, Sean goes into it on our podcast about it. So I'm going to link that up above. Um, I'll over, overlay it here so that you guys can go find that. If you're looking for serious, like real explanation on the pathways that it goes through and how it works, I don't want to embarrass myself or do a disservice to the product for Sean. But the things that I want to communicate about the ingredient are that uh, obviously berberine hydrochloride has been the standard for glucose disposal ingredients. Um, the problem being with it is one on the market, the purity is not very good. There are some great companies out there that make it. However, I don't trust the masses to be able to find that. I know where to find it right, but uh, I feel bad for people that are going out and looking for it because they watch a video and they can't find a good quality source. NNB Nutrition has rock solid Q, uh, QC. You know that it's gonna be pure. I re requested third party analysis and I had it within an hour. Um, I trust them on the purity aspect of this. So that, that's a big problem. Since berberine hydrochloride is not a patented ingredient, it's all over in tons of different forms for different companies. From NNB Nutrition, Glucovantage is the first commercially available uh, dihydroberberine. It's patented by them and it comes out for them. So really happy about that. The other problem with berberine hydrochloride is that at high dosages of it, it can actually cause gastric distress. So one of the nice things about dihydroberberine as compared to berberine hydrochloride is that you only need 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams, where as berberine hydrochloride, you're going to need 750 to uh, you know, a gram and a half. Um, and the reasoning for this is actually because what happens when you ingest berberine hydrochloride is it when it gets into the stomach, it converts into dihydroberberine, what we're taking here. And then after the dihydroberberine is absorbed, it converts it back to berberine. So we can just skip that whole process and consume dihydroberberine at a lower dosage, which then converts into berberine in the body. Uh, it's much more effective milligram per milligram because you can take a smaller amount and end up with that in your blood in your system. The problem being, and this is being pretty kind of tra transparent, is that because it's a you know a process much further than berberine hydrochloride, and because it's a patented ingredient that is kind of rare at this point, it's a little bit more expensive to put into a, a product. So whereas bar berberine hydrochloride, you could cost effectively put a whole gram and a half into the product. With dihydroberberine, you may have a harder time getting that high dosage in there at an effective dosage. So really excited with this product. We've seen a few companies come out with it at lower dosages, like around 85 milligrams. Our friend Max Fairchild, uh, who we did some content with from Nutrex, uh, actually now at a different company has it in a product 85 milligrams that I've heard is just super strong. Um, we've talked to a few of our partners about being able to put dihydroberberine into a product and we're really excited about that. There's a lot of cool different uh, delivery options here like Uh, overall, I'm really excited about the ingredient, but this was, I really just wanted to get an explainer out there as well as a testimonial, kind of like a review on my side. Um, I know normally don't like to say the word review because people start coming out with me bias and stuff, but in this case, honestly, it's just an anecdotal testimony of what it did for my blood sugar, and I thought that it was extremely significant. So if you guys enjoyed the content, please leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Um, this is a little bit different for me, but I wanted to get this up here, share our um results with it mostly my blood results but mike has also been raving about this stuff so really excited to see this hopefully in some new products out there uh if you have any questions please let me know if you are interested in nnb nutrition you can go to pricebloodcom slash nnb nutrition for all your news reviews interviews uh and all that sorts of stuff on our blog so guys thank you so much for watching and have a great day welcome to price Plow.